from almost anywhere in the world, satellites can be seen filling the gaps between the stars, and there have never been as many as there are today. Entire governments and companies are in a race to fill up as much orbital real estate as possible with a controversial new technology, satellite constellations. You might have seen a few of these before, passing along the night sky in a uniform line. While satellites are nothing new, having been employed as far back as the late 1950s with the launch of Sputnik, the first ever satellite from the Soviet Union, things have changed a lot. Since then, we've seen the start and finish of the space race, more international countries joining the fun with their own programs, and the rapid rise of commercial space companies like SpaceX and Blue Origin, all of them filling the sky with yet more stuff. Is this a good thing? Look at this graph, showing the total number of satellite launches throughout history. The exponential growth is an unprecedented trend into new waters that may yet decide the future of humanity among the stars. Don't believe me? Let's take a closer look and learn just how satellite constellations might either save or possibly end humanity. But to understand how, first we need to know exactly what these things are. Satellite constellations, or mega constellations, are all the rage in the space industry. They represent a new and innovative way of connecting the world and communicating information on an unprecedented scale. The basic premise is that the satellites work together in an integrated network, providing permanent internet coverage at a global or partially global scale, by always having at least one satellite connecting over a given area. This gives phenomenal connectivity and latency speeds, which is great for consumers, but this naturally means that thousands of these satellites need to be mass manufactured and placed into orbit, and that they have. Satellite companies like OneWeb, SpaceX's Starlink, and even Amazon have been racing to tap into this new and potentially lucrative market. As of December 2023, SpaceX alone has devoted 168 rocket launches to its Starlink missions, putting a total of 5,627 individual satellites into Earth orbit. These companies, especially the expense-heavy SpaceX, are betting on these satellite constellations as a new way to make money. At their greatest potential, they could even obsolete fiber optic cable, and that has gotten the attention of governments worldwide. In an era of shrinking globalization and a greater urgency for countries to have more control over their own critical infrastructure, governments have taken interest in the idea of diversifying away from fiber optic cable. After all, they're ground-based, vulnerable infrastructure that could be targeted by terrorists, espionage, or war itself. Being able to maintain permanent connectivity from space is a valuable thing in the eyes of governments, companies, and utilities companies around the world. The USA contracted SpaceX to build a Starlink mega constellation exclusively for its military network, called Starshield. China has already started construction of its 13,000 strong constellation called Guo Wang, literally translating to State Network. And the Ukrainian military has been using Starlink to maintain battlefield communications in its conflict with Russia. Entire countries have seen the importance of maintaining the flow of information and are placing big bets on this innovative new technology demand of which companies are more than happy to match. Yet, like most new technologies, satellite constellations walk the line between the cutting edge and the knife's edge, both beneficial and harmful. And if not carefully walked, one small misstep could doom humanity to a prison of its own making. The benefits can't be understated. Satellite constellations are connecting the world at an exponential scale, bringing internet to most rural places on Earth, like the Australian outback, Amazon rainforest, and even Antarctica. Suddenly, disparate communities around the world have a voice in global communications, and no one can deny the ambition of what amounts technically to humanity's first off-world mega-project. Starting to get some Type 2 civilization vibes here. But satellite constellations aren't without some major problems. Astronomy, the vast majority of which is ground-based, and is paramount for not only studying the universe, but also proactively protecting humanity from threats within it like asteroids or gamma-ray bursts, is a growing victim of satellite constellations. Thousands of new, shiny targets streaking across the sky can interrupt important research with visuals like these, creating a whole new form of light pollution. All satellites have a finite lifespan, and SpaceX has already begun destroying some of theirs. Hundreds of its older Starlink models have already deliberately been lowered into a controlled burn in the Earth's atmosphere, and while SpaceX has claimed that their debris is completely destroyed, minimizing risk of ground impacts, there is a concern among environmental groups that various chemicals and heavy metals, when undergoing the extreme heat of re-entry, may damage the atmosphere, which has long been a historical concern. In 1987, chlorofluorocarbons, a chemical used in refrigerators, were banned worldwide after they were discovered to deplete the ozone layer after rising into the stratosphere. Before that, similar concerns were raised in the 1970s regarding supersonic jets, such as the Concorde, 
which released ozone destroying emissions directly into the stratosphere, where they flew. And keep in mind that there are thousands of these expendable, relatively short lived satellites in orbit right now, with tens of thousands more on the way. Over time, enough of them burning up may lead to damage, though it will take more data to know for sure. But perhaps most frightening of all, these constellations could yet prove to be the bars of our own prison. Space junk has been a growing risk for decades, with frighteningly few solutions being seriously considered. It's only ever getting worse due to the exponential use of reusable rockets that not only leave little pieces of themselves orbiting behind after each launch, but also have been dumping these many satellites into orbit at a rapid rate. More debris, more target for debris. This poses a risk of activating the Kessler effect. The Kessler effect is a model for the exponential growth of space junk and the damage that it causes, which basically states that at a certain point of no return, more junk striking more constellations, creating more junk, leads to an unavoidable spiral of destruction. Until one day, not only is Earth orbit fatal to any new satellites, but it might not be able to be crossed at all. These videos show the kind of damage that even small pieces of junk moving at orbital speeds can cause. If the Kessler effect is ever engaged at a large enough scale, it might be impossible to send anything beyond Earth orbit for years, potentially centuries. No more space exploration, no more protecting the Earth from asteroids, and no more satellite TV. With enough satellites in orbit giving the Kessler effect all the fuel it needs to grow exponentially, all it could take is a few satellites being destroyed to trap us on Earth forever, vulnerable to the threats of being a single planet species. But what's the actual risk of this happening? Thankfully not high at all for normal circumstances. If satellites are continually made and destroyed at a commensurate rate, then we might not ever have to worry about the Kessler effect. But normal circumstances imply the existence of abnormal ones as well. Space is increasingly becoming the final frontier for war. I've got a whole video about space warfare that's in development right now, which I'll link below later, but right now, all you need to know is that Earth is increasingly looking like a new battlefield in the eyes of world militaries. Both China and Russia have developed weapons specifically designed to destroy satellites. China and Russia have the weapons to target America's most valuable assets, our satellites. In their quest for world dominance, outer space is the next battleground. And as recently as 2021, Russia even tested one by destroying a defunct Soviet-era satellite. That single satellite produced enough debris for the International Space Station to have to perform two avoidance maneuvers to avoid taking damage. Keeping in mind that Russia is a member of the ISS and actively has its cosmonauts in orbit aboard it. Normal circumstances don't apply when socio-political power moves come into play, and there's no bigger one than war. If a conflict between countries with space-based assets and space-based weapons were to break out, all of them would be a target if it meant preventing enemy communications. We've gotten a taste of this with the conflict in Ukraine, with Russia targeting Starlink ground installations to prevent Ukraine from having battlefield intel. In a major conflict, it's not a stretch to see orbital infrastructure getting the same treatment. So perhaps then the question isn't if the Kessler effect will necessarily happen, but how likely is it that belligerent countries would take their conflicts into space? I don't know the answer, but for the foreseeable future, satellite constellations are here to stay, and for better or worse, Earth is going to have to get used to space junk. Maybe countries could come together to agree not to target orbital infrastructure in war to prevent these risks from happening in a similar way to how mutually assured destruction has prevented the use of nuclear weapons in war. Maybe more advanced methods for cleaning up space junk could be employed sooner rather than later. Maybe as more data is gathered, the Kessler effect could prove to be a trivial boogeyman more so than a natural threat. But those risks will still be there for so long as we have artificial objects orbiting Earth. And for better or worse, humanity will adapt. But it is important to stay educated and aware on those risks so that humanity can clean up its act and its skies to ensure the bright future we were all promised among the stars.